Hello everyone, my name is Matt Scorpion and welcome back to Helldivers 2. Now, I'm just going to flat out say it, I'm going to start doing Helldivers 2 content a little more regularly. Along the lines of my Destiny content, it'll mostly be patch notes and details, news about things that are, at least in the weekly, more important. Because obviously with major orders, there is sometimes things that change between literally like a day, in the case of Malevolon Creek being liberated and updates like that, but in terms of like patch notes and weekly updates, bug fixes, I'm going to try and actually keep a line on the important things. Now to start off, they have added a few different modifiers to a variety of planets, including the icy and desert based ones, because there will be new planetary hazards, including blizzards and sandstorms. So it, they haven't exactly specified how lethal they would be, or if it's anything to worry about, like the volcanoes or meteor strikes, or if it might just be a temporary low visibility high wind moment. Then for a few objective based things, there is the Retrieve Essential Personnel mission. They moved enemy spawn points further away from the objective to give players a fairer chance of defending the location, and there are fewer civilians required to complete the mission on higher difficulties, in case this one was a pain in the butt for you. The Destroy Command Bunkers objective now has more objective locations. The mission was far too easy before compared to other missions and now can appear in operations as far as difficulty 5. They also have the negative effect of operation modifiers and increased stratagem cooldowns or call in times. So either the cooldown has been reduced or, or the cooldown has been in how do I say this? Extended by 100%, that'll only be 50%. Same for the um, call-in time. Because not going to lie, that made a lot of stratagems that weren't automatic aiming practically ineffective. So hopefully that impact is less obvious. Starting to get into weapons and stratagems. For the arc thrower, they fixed a little bit of inconsistency, so now every shot only ta or will take a second to charge. However, they also reduced its range from 50 to 35 meters, while also increasing its stagger force. So while it doesn't hit as far, things that are closer will be stunned for longer, so hopefully it will keep things away just as well. The Liberator-based guard dog that fires uh, rounds as opposed to lasers has been uh, updated so now it restores full ammo from supply boxes. I think it, this was one of the reasons a lot of people didn't run it, although I have noticed that because this one does have limited ammo as opposed to heat buildup, it is probably still the lesser choice. Now, a nerf that might be felt down the line against hulks and other heavily armored things, the anti-material rifle is getting a nerf damage decreased by 30%. So it's possible it's overall they didn't they didn't touch crits, although I haven't played with it against anything really that big, so it's hard to tell whether or not this was definitely a nerf to bring it in line with other things. Although of all the weapons, the anti-material rifle only really seemed useful against smaller targets and hulk crit points. With the Quasar, those are both kind of not so worrisome anymore. Getting into some basic primary weapons, the Breaker Incendiary has been buffed so that per bullet damage is increased from 15 per bullet to 20 per bullet. So a little bit more total damage all around. As well, the Liberator Penetrator has been updated so it has a full auto option. However, they didn't change much else uh, from that so it's literally just available as full auto so maybe not so great. Then the Dominator has been updated, so how it has 300 damage up from 200. It now also has increased stagger, so hopefully things will get uh, recoiled a little bit more, making it hopefully a better option against, you know, the heavily armored bots that it is otherwise seemed to be made for. The Diligence Counter Sniper has increased armor penetration now, so it is along the same line of penetration as the Penetrating Liberator. It has up to medium armor penetration, making the more heftier things less of an issue. Then a nerf that might be hard depending on how many people actually used it, the Slugger got a few all-around nerfs. It now has reduced staggers, so things recoil from shots less. Its damage was reduced from 280 to 250. It gets reduced demolition force, which I'm not sure exactly what that means, but it might break armor less. But they also did fix this armor penetration tag, so it is correctly labeled as medium penetration. In addition to the Slugger, the Liberator Concussive and the Senator have also been updated to have correct armor penetration tags in their menu. Now the Recoilless Rifle has actually been buffed in terms of ammo, because instead of just getting two rockets from every resupply, you now get three rockets with every resupply, making so you only need two boxes to hopefully fill up your backpack to maximum. 
The same goes for the spear, just unless so. Instead of one missile per resupply, it now gets two missiles per resupply. And lastly, with stratagems, the heavy machine gun has been reduced in its rate of fire from 1200 RPMs to a more moderate 950. I don't know if this will make it easier to aim with, considering you don't have a reticle at all aside from aim down sight, so here's to see. Now, they did make a change to the Patriot exosuit for its missiles, specifically for its armor penetration. Basically, now it only penetrates armor on direct hits, which realistically wise makes sense. Random explosions wouldn't just peel off armor. However, in addition to that, Charger's now melee, um, uh, or Charger melee attacks will do less damage against exosuits. So, hopefully that just means that in against the bugs or a close quarters uh, Charger, they last a little bit more. In addition to that, the bile spewers and nursing spewers do des less damage with their ranged acid vomit. As well, the bile titan can no longer be stunned. In addition to that, the shriekers can no longer create bug breaches, which thank god, because when you couldn't manage to kill them and they constantly spawned breaches, that was a pain. As well, shriekers on death deal significantly less damage so that there isn't a martyrdom bombardment attack from something you killed a thousand feet ago. As well, they did change some adjustments to armor. They did some reworking so that heavy and medium armor protects better. Now, for the heavy armor, you take about 10% less damage while wearing heavy. And for the medium, you take about 5% less damage wearing medium. The fortified commando and light armor, however, are unchanged. Now, some more erroneous fixes. They fixed an issue where save settings for the PlayStation 5 would reset when the game is rebooted, causing things such as loadout and hint settings to reset. Enemies now properly target exosuits. Previously, many enemies effectively ignored exosuits if a Helldiver on foot was available for them to target. Fixed exosuits being able to fire their weapons while opening the mini map. And the Helldiver and exosuit both had a bug that made them sometimes take explosion damage multiple times, making things like automaton rockets be too deadly. This is now fixed. So in cases where you're getting one shot by automaton rockets, here's hoping that you live. Now, as well, automaton enemy constellations that preferred to spawn more of certain devastator types did not work and now are functioning as they should. This means that sometimes when playing against the automatons, you'll face more devastators instead of other enemy types. We have improved the system that prevents help pods steering to large or important objectives. Solved issues where effective area around targets was a lot larger than intended. You have reduced the number of objects that prevent help pod steering. Note, this system is intended to prevent soft locks where players can drop on important interaction points or drop into unintended places. We will continue to monitor the state of the system if, uh, after the update to see if additional tweaks are necessary. And as well, they fixed cases where the ground under some assets could be bombed, causing them to float. And they also changed some stuff to the ballistic shield, making it so that it basically is more effective. The collision match has been slightly increased for more forgiveness, and the shield pose exposes less of your Helldiver. They also addressed the bug where parts of the health diver will become vulnerable if you use the shield just in first person. Now to round up things with known issues in the game. The game might crash when or crash when picking up a snowball or throwing back grenades. Various issues involving friend invites and crossplay, including that cross-platform friend invites might not show up in the friend request tab. Players cannot unfriend other players befriended via ven uh, friend code. Players cannot unblock players that were not in their friends list beforehand. And players cannot befriend players with shorter name or steam names shorter than three characters as well explosive weapon stats only include direct hit damage but not explosive damage for obviously the explosive bit explosions do not break your limbs except for when you fly into a rock basically when you get flown somewhere then planetary liberation uh, liberation reaches 100 at the end of every defend mission drowning in deep water with the vitality booster equipped uh puts helldiver in a broken state the Stratagem B might attach itself to an enemy, but it will deploy on its original location. If you've noticed that you throw it at a bug, it wanders away and suddenly it's in the old place. And some player customizations like title or body type might reset after the game. So with that, that is the most recent update to Helldivers 2. Now, lastly, there is one little thing that you might notice in the dispatch that you were actually given a free cape to commemorate the liberation of Malevolon Creek. Which would be this one, the Fallen Heroes Vengeance. A pretty solid looking one, as well as color palettes and everything else. Might just wear it depending on whether or not I just feel like representing the dead. But with that, that is the end of this Helldivers 2 video. Like I said, I will try to keep more in line with the just regular patch notes and everything else like that. Big things. Of course, if there is a big change to the game, like recently the release of 
automaton gunships as well as ATS ATATs. I will basically cover more things like that when there is a big change. However, when it's basic major events, that is more like daily bounties, so it's kind of hard to keep track with that, aside from making a more long-form video. But with that, my name is Matt Scorpion, and thank you for diving.